<laughs> we have indeed, although I doubt it was him calling. I would be very, very surprised indeed if he were making an adult-sounding lipid call. So, we, you just missed it, actually, because it was as we lost signal and disappeared off your screen that I came round the corner, and lo and behold, there is Hosanna lying up in a pile of dung. The best, most comfortable patch for a leopard to lie on. I guess, I suppose it's a bit spongy and quite squishy, so I guess maybe it is comfy. I don't see any fresh, fresh dung in there, so maybe not as bad as it looks. And the cesticulars are absolutely furious somewhere just behind him, which makes me think there's another leopard here. Maybe his sister, maybe his mum. He's hearing things as well. He's listening. You were a serious surprise, mister. I did not think you were going to have wandered all this way along here. Why did you wander all the way along here? I wonder whether last night Karula went to fetch him. Well, yesterday morning, this young male leopard, who is almost a year old, in two days he's going to have his first birthday, um, he was following his mom and his sister, and... He just decided he didn't want to follow them anymore and lay down and refused to go any further in a true teenage style. I think he just decided the morning was a little bit too early and he went to sleep. He's also got quite a sore foot. It could well be from falling out of trees. What was I? Uh, sorry, I completely forgot what I was talking about. Oh yes, he's got a limp from falling, potentially falling out of a tree. He might have been from scrapping with his sister. I don't think it's too serious. Now, the reason that I know that this is Hosanna is I know what Hosanna looks like. I don't know how else to explain it. He's got a very distinctive look. He's quite a big young leopard for a year old cub, and he, but still not as large as an adult leopard. He's also, underneath his tail, got the barest hint of a testicle. And of the two leopard cubs that we get in this area, one has testicles and one does not. His sister, Shongile, is presumably somewhere around here. You sleepy boy. Have you had a busy night? He also, in terms of identifying Hosanna, he also has a nick. I've just remembered. He's got a nick out of his left ear. A little, sort of just a little missing piece at the top there. So that is Hosanna. His sister is much tinier than him and has slightly brown eyes, although their eye colors become very, very similar. What a nice bundled up surprise to find whilst driving around. Now he, I mentioned earlier that it wouldn't be him calling and it absolutely wouldn't be. Um, male leopards only really start to show signs of dominance in that way and that's what calling like that is a territorial thing it's a territorial marker to warn other leopards to stay away and for male leopards they only really establish themselves in territories at around about five or six years old of course quarantine has proved to be the exception of that rule where at four years old already he is he's been seen calling he's been seen marking and he's been seen mating and quarantine appears to be the exception to that established rule. No, well, not established rule, exception to that general principle. So it definitely wasn't Hosanna. What's interesting is that we were watching them yesterday, Viam and myself, and Karula was scent marking as she walked along with her two cubs. And Shungile immediately went and scent marked on top of where her mom had scent marked straight away. And, and then Hosanna would come along, sniff a little bit, and then once he sort of pretended to spray the bushes urine by scenting it with his urine, but he didn't actually produce any urine. It was interesting watching that behavior, the mimicry that they show when it comes to watching their mom's behavior. <coughs> Excuse me. And then imitating it. Sorry, that, was, that sneeze took me quite by surprise. And welcome to Nicole, 
who would like to know, because we've spoken before, we've seen other vehicles, and in fact, I'm sure we're going to be joined by another vehicle in the not-too-distant future. Morning, Nicole. You want to know whether if you come on safari, do you learn about the different characters that we learn about in these live safaris? Uh, for example, do they know about the royal family? Uh, they don't necessarily call them the royal family, but absolutely they do get to know the individual characters, depending, on, of course, on who they see. Because coming out on safari, you only really get to, most guests only really get to experience the joys of these leopards for a few days before it's time for them to leave once again. Which is why our live safaris are a wonderful way of following the stories for much, much longer. But we all use the same name, names, for the different cats. So yes, absolutely. Karula is called Karula. Hosanna and Shungila are called Hosanna and Shungile officially. And that is how they will be introduced to the guests. Or it's, it depends on the guide as well. It depends on who is guiding them. Some guides will ignore the fact that there are names for the individual characters. But they'll still explain them in a way that makes complete sense. So, for example, if, if they weren't to use the name Hosanna, they might say this is a one-year-old cub. He's the son of the dominant female in this area. He was fathered by, most likely fathered by, the dominant male in this area, and so on. So they still get the background into the behavior of the leopards. They just might not get hear the name. But for the most part, most guides will use the same names. The cisticulars. Potential fathers, and of course, Tingana was not too far away from where Hosanna is now yesterday. Uh, Safari Lauren, you want to know whether or not or how Tingana would react to Karula and Cubs now? Most likely, and I mean, the reason I say most likely is only because leopards can be so unpredictable at times. But Tingana has been seen with Karula and the cubs before. He's been seen sharing kills with them. He's been seen occasionally showing a little bit of irritability, snarling at them a little bit, and then the cubs moved off. But because he thinks he is the father, and he probably is the father, there is a very good chance that he will just simply tolerate them. Um, male leopards, for our new viewers, do not really play a fatherly role in, in raising their cubs. I'm distracted, I'm sorry. There's a pair of puffback shrikes that are displaying that I want to, they're just there and you don't, we don't always get to put that on camera. Can you see them there, Viam, in that knob thorn? Like little balls of cotton wool. And the one is displaying quite fiercely. There's, I think that's the female there. And then if we go just a little, I've lost him now, just a little bit lower. There was maybe even a little bit further. Sorry, Viam. I can't see him now either. He was all fluffed up like a cotton wool ball. I think that's the female calling to him. Aha, I see him. <clears throat> if you go down... Oh, wait. Is, is, is he going to fly away? Um, where is he? He's behind, behind in the... Is he there? Oh, well done, Viam. Puffback Shrike, black-backed Puffback, and now they've both stopped displaying just because, there he goes, well done, Viam, well done, that was incredible, most impressive, all right, I just wanted to try and show you what they look like when they get their back all puffed up, they really do, they look like they've got cotton wool on their backs, now just bear with me one moment, I don't think my last call went through, so I just want to try again, orbs, orbs, Oh, look, Shungile. <laughs> Surprise! I thought there was another leopard there. Good morning. Look at you sauntering. Yes, he's there. Look, she's going to ambush him. I am stealth. <laughs> like a sister jumping on her brother's bed. When he's still asleep. <laughs> Sweet. There you go. So now we've got a brother and a sister reunited. That's what was causing the great alarm from the cisticulars. She's cleaning in his ear. 
Who needs earbuds when you've got a sister? It's a weird thought. <laughs> She's trying to entice him into play. And he's not really having any of it. <laughs> oh, Shogila, I'm tired. I'm growing. Leave me alone. <laughs> or not. A bop on the head. The size difference isn't as pronounced anymore. Shungile's grown so much in the last month or so. She no longer looks as tiny as she did. That's what I think. Viam, you agree? Yeah. I don't think she's... She, there's such a disproportionate level between their growth sizes or their growth rates. Half cuddling, half half just lying on top of each other. <laughs> it's, it's half affectionate. Oh, these two, for our newer viewers have joined us, these two are regularly left together on their own, as all leopard cubs are. So fortunately, they have each other for company. And when Vim and I were discussing earlier or thinking a little bit about the fact we're wondering about whether or not a solitary leopard cub or a lone leopard cub has an advantage or a disadvantage because of course they get more food because they're the only ones sharing it with mum but they don't get the play companionship that a pair like these two will have and I mean through this playfulness they're actually learning vital skills and gaining strength in that will serve them particularly well in the future look at <laughs> I mean, she's going in for the kill there. She's got her brother by the throat. Will she release him? Yes, of course she will. Go and clean the ticks off the back of his ears instead. <laughs> Get up and play with me. <laughs> Get off! <laughs> oh, Hosanna is a tough being a long suffering brother, huh? <laughs> this is. <laughs> this is such a perfect <laughs> symbol of some sibling relationships happening right here. I love you, but also I want to bite you and kick you in the face. <laughs> and I will make sure that your ears are spotless. <laughs> yep, get that paw out of my face or I will bite it. So funny, Hosanna is not interested. He just she, he just wants to go back to sleep. Shongile is obviously the morning person in this relationship. Look at his face. Lovely, lovely question coming through from Michael. While we watch two cats of completely different personalities, Michael, it's a question that is at the moment being researched. There's a lot of research going into answering. <laughs> oh, she's doing a good job of tempting him into it, whether he wants to or not. Michael, you want to know if it's possible for big cat cubs to have different fathers? It is something that is hypothesized is entirely possible because it does happen with cats, with smaller cats, that 
members of the same litter can be fathered by different fathers. We know that female leopards regularly, she, look, she's listening. I think she wants to see if the cysticulars are alarm calling it mom. Nope, back to harassing poor Hosanna. Uh, Michael, it's something that is at the moment, it's one of the reasons why we go around and collect vials of leopard scat to send through as part of the study into paternity because it is something that's been suggested that is possible because females mate with multiple male partners, which is makes total sense because they want them to believe that they're the father and increase the security of their cubs. <laughs> I'm not sure who, who I feel sorry for here. Poor Hosanna who just wanted to sleep. <laughs> Get off Shogina, that hurts. Oh, oh, now he's cross. That was too much. The a little frustrated grunt there. All right, I'm up. Now what? Why did you wake me up? Mom's not here. There's no breakfast. I had a nice comfortable spot in my pile of dung. Yeah, unimpressed. Ah, oh, and Shungi has taken his spot. <laughs> Comfortable there. But you two. Trouble on eight legs. <laughs> Shongile is definitely not up for a morning nap. It looks so woebegone. Shogile just looks pleased as punch with herself. I've got my brother's position. I've got his spot. I've got his stick. Tax or Aubrey for Jamie. I don't think anybody can hear me on the Game Drive channel. This is most distressing. Rebecca, please won't you ask... Tristan to call this in on the junction of Elephant Skull and Twin Dance. Oh, there we go, there we go. Hold on, never mind. <laughs> I'm not sure if you copied. I've got Karula's Bantuans here, Elephant Skull, Junction, Twin Dance. Cool, perfect. Sorry, sorry, Rebecca, never mind. They could hear me, they just forgot to respond. Bop on nose. <laughs> Hassan has managed to win back his spot. And now Shungile is just being cutesy. And they do keep each other thoroughly entertained. That's what I was talking about before. I wonder which has the better advantage, a single cub or a pair of them? I think three of three leopard cubs is probably... Oh, Up into the marula tree. Somebody has definitely struggles with attention. <laughs> She's like a little hyperactive child. <laughs> now, of course, the bond between these two is very sibling like. I'm scared to move actually. Oh, hopefully, it works. I just want to get a better position for Shungile as well. It's okay, mister. It's okay. It's okay. Here we go. Um, as Shungile finds herself a comfortable spot on her marula tree, she loves that pose. Brian, we've watched the very sibling-like relationship between the two of them, but of course hormones are going to start playing a role in the not too distant future. We want to know if sibling leopards will know not to reproduce with each other. The answer, unfortunately, with big cats tends to be no. Inbreeding is a, a thing that does occur, not relatively regularly, but it does happen. Um, mothers or sons often mate with their mothers. Sons can mate with their sisters as well. It does occur within big cats. They're not governed by human morality. They're governed by 
a biological imperative to reproduce. But what nature has done in order to reduce that, that possibility is the pattern of dispersal with young male leopards. So Shungile will stick around here. And Hosanna, let's just see how he's walking. Or not. Back, back right leg. Did you hurt yourself, boy? No wonder he's so reluctant to play. He's sore. Shame. I'm not too concerned. It's horrible always to see characters that we love in hurting in some way. But I'm, at the moment, I'm not too worried. We've seen leopards and lions with limps regularly. They have this amazing capacity to heal and to get better. I'm not too concerned about him yet. I think if he had to, he could use that leg if he needed to get out of the way, if he needed to escape. And of course, he's got the care and concern of his mum. So he, it's not like he has to rely on himself to hunt. I'm not sure where exactly the injury is. It might even just be a thorn that's stuck between two pads of his toes. Yep, you see? He can still bounce around. Your sister's going to jump on you. Attack from above. Or she's going to get distracted by rubbing her cheek on a branch. <laughs> Sorry, let me just finish very quickly talking about Brian. Dispersal patterns for young males. Wow, got you. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> oh, Hosanna. I don't think I've ever seen a leopard fall out of as many trees as I've seen you fall out of. It didn't look like a very comfortable fall either. There was a proper audible thump. Yes. Oh, he is Tingana's son. He is Tingana's son. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> oh, shame. He looked at his sister as if to say, stop laughing at me. <laughs> Show off. <laughs> Shame, Shogila. He's got a sore leg. Cut him some slack. I'm just going to pretend that I meant to do this, that actually really all I wanted to do was have the top half of my body up on this log. What was that answering? I can't even remember what question I was talking about now. Um, dispersal patterns, that was it. Yes, the young males move away. Females will stay within close to the territory of their mothers, generally and the young males will move away and basically go and sow their wild oats, so to speak, a bit further away from the, the, the female line. Chungile, you are not helping. That was very Lion King-esque. She just lifted his paw off the tree. <laughs> Long live the king, Hosanna. She's the queen of the castle, so to speak. These two are so sweet. I'm gonna get your tail. Except, oh, the last time I tried this, this didn't work so well. Okay, oh no, my leg's a bit sore. Oh dear. Oh, okay, well, I'm gonna attack you from below then. Shame, poor boy. I would not be at all surprised if that injury did not come from a sore foot. Right. I'm going to reposition and see if we can get a better view. But while I do that, let's go see how B Tristan's doing with our bird contest. Oh, well, Tristan's wrist just discovered the hyena den, potentially, of Gwen. We've just had another visitor who is actually giving me grey hairs at the moment. Good thing Hosanna saw this hyena coming long ago and is now up in the top of the worst possible tree he could be in. But he is perfectly safe from this hyena. Hello, hyena. Oh. Galloping around here. Oh, having a good roll. Maybe Hosanna had urinated or defecated there. <laughs> oh, is that nice? Is that nice? Having a jolly good rub. I would really would have preferred if you didn't send the injured cub up into the tallest possible thorn tree with your arrival. I don't think that this hyena knew that they were here though. He just happened to be wandering around. <laughs> Back scratch. Mm. 
Here we go. Now that you're all filthy. <laughs> they are truly comical creatures. And I'm off again. I'm off. I'm off on an adventure. I'm going towards Shungile now. Shungile is in the top of the giant boar bean that is that we've often seen them in. He's just Oh, bless you. Did you get some dirt up your nose by any chance? I just want to see whether or not it goes towards... No, he's going to miss Shungile completely. I don't think that he saw or smelt her. It's chaos this morning. It's all happening. Our Shungile's up in a boar bean tree, which is a very comfortable tree. Hosanna, on the other hand, is not. He's in a knob thorn tree, which is not... <coughs> a very comfortable tree at all and it's such a pity because there was a perfect tambour tea right next to it that he could have gone into without thorns but in instead he has found himself perched right at the top of the knob thorn so i'm not going to follow our hyena i'm going to stick with our leopard cubs hassan is actually giving me gray hairs watching him at the top of this tree because he's gone all the way up now i don't know how he's going to get down I don't think it's going to be a very comfortable descent. I'm sure he's fine. And I noticed that after a little bit of play with Shongile, his leg was looking much better. So I think he just stretched it out, warmed it up a little bit. Now what? Oh, a day in the life of a leopard cub. One minute you have to give up your comfortable sleeping spot to your sister. The next you're up in a thorn tree because a hyena came walking past. I suppose it's a good thing that his sister came and woke him up. Otherwise that hyena might have succeeded in surprising him. Now what? Oh dear. Uh, I know that many of you are wondering with Hosanna's sore foot whether or not he is more at risk of being caught by a hyena or something like that. I don't think his injury is too serious. We've seen, as we, we've often seen, far worse on leopards. Tingana, for example, had a terrible limb for a long time. And when push comes to shove, you'll find that they're able to push past it if they really need to. I just wish he hadn't picked such an uncomfortable tree to have to try and climb down. Because let's face it, Hosanna hasn't shown the best tree climbing skills in the world up until now. Uh, he has a tendency to fall. So add in a couple of thorns and you've really got an awkward situation. Although hopefully he's going to just be very careful as he goes down. So he is, um, obviously any kind of an injury does place a a cat more at risk but i'm not too concerned about him i just want to see that he does this descent oh those thorns no wonder you've got a sore foot you silly shame mom help ow oh hosanna Luckily, you've got a furry coat. Ouch. I know exactly what it's like to be attacked by knob thorns, and it's not pleasant at all. Oh dear. Now you've got to get your legs on the other side of that branch. That's it. There we go. Slowly, slowly. Okay, now what? Yes, eat the tree. That will help. Yep. Tell you what, you pluck away each thorn and then walk down. That'll definitely help. Oh, shame. Now, he's up a tree for a very, very good reason. So it's not actually his fault that he's up this knob thorn tree, which is the most inappropriate tree he could possibly be in. Zaz, you want to know if a hyena will kill a leopard? Yes. Absolutely they will if they can get hold of them, especially a leopard <gasps> cub. Sorry, that was a gut reaction there. Um, yes, they will. And they absolutely can and they do. They do kill leopard cubs. Oh, Hosanna. Are you going to pay for the boxes of hair dye to cover the grey hairs? 
No, you're not, are you? Oh, shame. You're so woebegone. At this age, these little leopard cubs could probably give a put up a very, very good fight. They're very strong, but they're unfortunately not quite a match for our hyena. Fortunately, they are faster, much, much faster and more agile, even with an injured foot, which is why they've survived as long as they have. And they're, all, they're at that stage now in their lives where their chances of survival dramatically increase. So once, you, once they get to their adult stage, you actually find that there's... A, an almost truce between leopards and hyenas, and it's not uncommon, as if it could get any worse, the, the, the wood hoopers are now laughing at him. Oh, poor Sana. Yes, you often find that you get leopards and hyenas lying not far away from each other. All done. Backwards is good. Backwards is probably the way. Ouch. That's a, that's a knob thorn between the legs. There we go. Softly, softly. Still a long way, so go gently. Ow. Look, it's caught in his fur. Ow. Biting back just to show the tree that he means business. Don't jump yet. You've got a sore foot. Just keep doing that. <laughs> Tufts of leopard fur wafting to the ground, and Hosanna is safely back on the ground. Whew. That was a bit stressful, my boy. Yes. Luckily, they're tough creatures. All animals out, out here are far more resilient and far tougher than a human being. He's going to be absolutely fine. And all part of the learning curve. Perhaps next time when he sees a hyena, he'll take that extra split second to think about which tree he goes into. Yes, take a good long look at it. That's a bad tree. That's a horrible tree. Mm hmm. Next time, get into the tree on the right. You had plenty of time. Oh, poor boy. James, you want to know if his limp is prominent enough to notice in his track? I don't think so. Not yet, but I'll double check and see. He's not dragging the foot or anything like that. He's still stepping with it. You might find that it's slightly out of alignment. There might not be a normal stride distance or an even stride distance. I don't think it's going to be hugely noticeable. Glancing back in embarrassment, he's now been joined by a bird feeding party. So he was watched in his indignity by wood hoopoos and helmet shrikes and all kinds of things. Okay, let's have a look at this limp. I don't see any sign of an injury. He keeps sitting down. He doesn't really want to walk. It's probably the first time that he's actually acquired a nasty injury. And it might also just be that he's not quite used to it. He'll learn to power through. Little boy. Your sister's in the boer bean. Whew. Quite glad for the safe descent. I was a bit concerned at one point. Leopards do fall out of trees, and they usually are absolutely fine. It does occasionally happen that... The grace and dignity is perhaps just lacking on one particular day. I can't judge them because I can barely walk in a straight line without falling over my own feet. So, you know, fair play to them. <laughs> it's a bad day. His belly's empty. His legs sore. His sister's being a pain. Hyenas won't leave him alone.
All right, there you go. Now you found yourself a nice, comfortable ditch to lie in. Oh, and now, as if it, the indignity couldn't be any worse, there's a go-away bird calling at him. <laughs> Telling him to go away. Go away. I know, mister. Right, I'm going to go... I completely forgot I was meant to be doing a bird list. I might have to bow out for this month. I've had far too good a leopard sighting to be worried too much about the birds at the moment. I love the birds, but what do you think, Viam? Nah, the leopards have been too have been too good for us to tear our attention away from. Except for the puffback shrike, but that was earlier. Bless you. The other thing about knob thorn cuts, speaking from experience, is they sting. So he's probably got one or two puncture wounds that aren't feeling terribly comfortable. He doesn't seem to be licking himself though. So I don't think, first of all, whatever's bothering him with his leg is not an open injury because I think he'd be licking at it. And he doesn't seem to have any major cuts from coming down that tree. Having a thick fur coat, I suppose, helps immensely. All right, mister, I'm gonna go and check on your sister and see that she's okay. I'm sure she's fine. Ah, it's all good news today. There's hyenas about and leopard cubs and all sorts of exciting things. Let's go and see what James makes of the morning events. A hanging white and black thing that belongs to a much larger golden black thing in the form of Shungile draped across the boer bean branch. And she's definitely decided to pick a much more comfortable tree than the one that her brother chose. She's up in this beautiful old boer bean, very, very high. But somehow I don't feel in any way concerned about Shungile being all the way up there. I think she's absolutely fine. And she's quite comfortable. When I first arrived here, she was sitting up and double checking to see that her brother, I think she was looking to see that the hyena had gone A and that B, her brother, was alive and well. And now, content that he is, she has decided to stretch herself out. Oh, wait, hold on. I spoke too soon. Oh, never mind. Didn't speak too soon. She just was finding a more comfortable spot, which has made her almost invisible to us. In which case, I think we'll try and shuffle around the tree to try and get a better view. Hassan is still sleeping in his ditch. He's found himself a nice, comfortable spot in there. I think he will try and spend as much time as possible healing up that leg now that he's used it to climb up a thorn tree. Okay. Which way round is going to work best for you, Shungile? Let's try this way. She's in one of my favorite trees on this reserve. It is so beautiful. We've seen them in this tree before, so she knows her way around very, very well. It does try and get around. Perhaps we can see her face. And then I think I'll probably leave our leopard cubs for now. We might check in on them before the end of the sunrise safari, but I think the play is done. And it's sleep time now. Until Karula decides to return. I might go and have a look and see if I can work out where Karula is, or at least where she has gone. Can you sort of see her there, Viam? I can't tell if I've put that branch in front of you or not. There we go. Here's little Shungile. Still alert and listening. I wonder if they spend all this time waiting going, I can't wait for mom to get back, I'm starving. Or if they relish the time alone. Nobody putting any pressure on them to behave, they can do what they want. It's tough having a working mom. And back to sleep she goes. I suppose I better try and catch up with the bird challenge. I think I, I bow out. I bow out of this month's one. It's been too good a morning. Don't you agree, Shungile? Yes.
Ah, oh, hyena's moved off. I wonder whether or not he's going to go and visit Gwen. It wouldn't surprise me at all. I know we're looking at a leopard, sorry, but I'm quite excited about the prospect of a hyena den again, so I want to talk about it a little bit. It makes total sense that Gwen has moved off on her own again. It's exactly what she did before, last year, June, with those two cubs. And what that means is if she's pregnant again, it means that her cubs didn't survive. Because it would be far too early for her to have had... Well, maybe not, I suppose. It is February. And she did have those cubs in June last year. Um, possibly. But I'm very excited. And Gwen, of course, is a very low-ranking hyena in our hyena clan, which is why I think she tries to den off on her own rather than with the rest of the clan. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm very excited at Tristan's find. It does seem as though our hyenas are spending a bit more time with us once again, which is unfortunate news, news for Shungila and Hasana. might mean that they spend more time up in trees, but they're at that age now where I'm not concerned at all about the possibility of a hyena attacking them. They've got so much experience now, and they're a year old. They know how to deal with this stuff. They were up in those trees long before that hyena came anywhere near them. Sorry. Hold on one second. I think somebody's calling me. Standing by. Copy. Perfect. Thank you, Tristan. Um, are there any other stations there? Copy, copy. Thank you, Tristan. Oh, we've got good news. Well, I hope it's good news. I hope it works for us as well. Because we're in Rusty, which might work a little bit better than Wendy, which is what Tristan's in. And Tristan has found Tundi. So what, do you, what we're going to do is I'm going to go and try and take over and go and have a look at her. Because we haven't seen Tundi in ages, so it would be lovely to see her again. I love Tundi. All right, you two. You be good. 